So y'all just you get to hear it again real quickly. Okay, so the video stopped on us. And we're going to go back and do number eight. Okay, so if eight was confusing, listen up again. All right, so for number eight, what we did is we used graph paper to graph it. We plotted our vertices of 511 and 5, negative 15, or 5, negative 2, rather. Wait a minute. That's not the one, is it? Yes, yes it is. <laughs> what did I plot? 511 and... Y'all, did we do it wrong? One. No, down here. Okay. Oh my gosh, these poor kids are going to be so confused. Okay. 511 and 5 negative 15 were our vertices. Okay. Vertex there. Vertex there. Okay. From there, we found the center point by finding the point halfway in the middle of those. So we averaged that y coordinate of 11 plus negative 15, divided it by 2, and got negative 2. That means that our center point, our h and our k, was 5, negative 2. Then, from that, we know that the distance from center to vertex is what we call a. So you can just literally count it, or distance from 11 down to negative 2 is 13. If a is 13, a squared is negative 169. Okay, then we go back to the information. The foci are at 5, 10, and 5, negative 14. So that's what is in green here, 5, 10, 5, negative 14. And from the information of foci, I can get that distance that we call C. So distance from focus to center is C. And again, you can just count or find distance from 10 to down to negative 2 is a distance of 12. So that means that C squared is 144. Okay, so now we have A squared and C squared, but we don't know B squared. So we use this. Pythagorean relation to find b squared. So we have 144 equals 169 minus b squared, plugging in c squared and a squared. That gives me b squared is 25. b is 5, but we talked about how we don't really need b to write the equation. We just need b squared. Okay, so all that. Center is 5, negative 2. A squared is 169, B squared is 25, plugging all of that into our formula for a vertical ellipse gives us this equation right here. Everybody good? Okay, now we'll move on. And if that stops recording, please tell me. Okay, we're going to do two more. That's number 10 and number 14. Um, so, I'm going to just sketch a graph over here on the left because these, these are pretty smallish numbers, so I'm going to try that. Co-vertices, uh-oh, what does that mean? Smaller. The shorter distance across it. Okay, 0, 6, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 right there. Huh? Can we do the formula to find? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, she said, can you just use the midpoint formula to find the center? Yes, do the midpoint formula between those two. You want me to set that up for a refresher? That's slope. Remember midpoint, we average the x's and average the y's. Okay, so midpoint would be 0 plus negative 6 divided by 2. So I'm averaging the x's, comma, average the y's, 6 plus 6 divided by 2. Okay, so that is negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. 12 divided by 2 is 6. And that should be the same thing if you're graphing it, if you walk it into the middle, or if you just average those x coordinates. That's one way. Uh huh. You're good. So if you prefer a formula, yes, there you go. 
midpoint formula, we'll find it without any guessing. Okay, so we know center. If these two coordinates are the covertices, is this vertical or horizontal? <laughs> covertices, vertical, yes. Because this is the shorter width or shorter distance across it. So that means that the longer up and down length will be greater. So it will be a vertical. A squared will go under the Y. B squared will go under the X. Okay, center point, H and K, we found that. What can I gather from these before I move on? A, B, or C? B. B. So B is that distance right there. How far is it from that point to that point? Three. B is three. Yeah, B is three. B squared is nine. B is the center to the vertex. To the co-vertex. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, so I need to find A squared, but look, they're not giving me the vertices. They're giving us the foci. Negative 3 comma 6 plus 2 square root of 10. Okay, here's the center. Here are the foci. What is C? Yeah, right there is C. What you're adding and subtracting to that center point, that's C. Right, because that's what we do with that C value. We go to the center and we add or subtract to X or Y depending on if it's vertical or horizontal. So here's your negative three, here's your six. It was added to the six, so that's your C that you added, plus or minus C value. So if C is two square root of 10, C squared is two square root of 10 squared. How is C not? The two values, the negative three, six. Uh, how we got two different C's? Yeah. Oh, 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 yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's, that's so center. confusing, y'all. This is center. Uh, Sorry about that. I was like, what are they talking about? Yes, yes, yes. And this is the C as in distance to the focus. That's very confusing, isn't it? Let me write out center. center. Okay. There we go. C as in distance to the focus is this. Now if you're using your calculator, the parentheses are important. If you're doing this in your head, the parentheses are important because I have to square the 2 and the square root of 10, which gives me 4 times 10, 40. Use your calculator if you need to, but the parentheses must be there or it will be wrong. I got 20. It's because you didn't put the parentheses from <laughs> 2 squared of 10. Is the square outside the parentheses? <laughs> yes. I did that, like the, how it's on the paper, and it gave me zero. Same. What? Yeah. Did you leave out the 1 with the 10? Oh, your square root only extends over the 1. Try putting the 10 under the square root, and then it should. Okay, anyone else stuck on that one? Stumped? Okay, so we have C squared and B squared. We're going to have to do C squared equals A squared minus B squared to find A squared. So 40 equals A squared minus 9. Add 9 to both sides. 49 is A squared, A is 7. And actually, I don't need A. What I need is A squared, right? Because I'm just writing the equation. Okay, it is vertical. So I am using the vertical formula, the big denominators under Y. So I have X minus H, X plus 3 squared, over B squared, 9 plus y minus k, which is 6, 
squared over a squared, 49, equals 1. Got one more in us? No. Yes! <laughs> one more. All right, guys. I know. We can do it. All right. Let's crunch through it. Seven, negative two. And negative seven, negative two. Okay, I'm not going to talk through it unless everybody find the center. Check up here when you get it. After you find the center, find A. Okay, after you find A and A squared, look up here. Eccentricity is given. What was eccentricity again? C over A. Very nice. Okay, well, there's our A. We actually didn't have to find A, did we? There's A. And this is C. So we're going to use C squared equals A squared minus B squared. Find B squared. Check up here once you get B squared. Is this vertical or horizontal? Horizontal. Okay, horizontal. Write your equation. I don't need the minus zero in there. I can just write x squared. Okay, I'm going to come around with the homework. We are not doing the whole thing. The problems that we are doing are one, three, five. 7, 9, 13. Okay, just those six. <laughs> I tell you what, I am posting these answers on Google Classroom, so feel free to do any of these others, and then you can check them on Google Classroom. Can you Google Classroom, so work extra ones and then check those answers. 